Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to be talking about rational functions and their asymptotes. The three asymptotes I'm going to be talking about are vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and slant asymptotes. While you don't have to like rational functions and asymptotes, there's nothing stopping you from liking this video. When you like the video, it helps the YouTube algorithm connect this video with other students who might be looking for some help. Also, feel free to check out the timestamps in the description to help you jump around the video. Let's start by looking at vertical asymptotes. These are only going to occur when the denominator is equal to zero. Let's take a look at this rational expression here. To see what makes this denominator equal to zero, we can set it equal to zero and solve for x. Since it's a quadratic expression, we can factor the trinomial here into the quantity of x minus five times the quantity of x plus two. The two values of x that are gonna make this equal to zero is five and negative two. While I'm not going to get into sketching graphs just yet, these are what these two vertical asymptotes would look like. The reason why you didn't have to deal with vertical asymptotes when you were working with polynomials is because you didn't have fractions and didn't have to deal with dividing by zero. If we were to graph this as a function, the domain would not include five or negative two. Keep in mind that you can have multiple vertical asymptotes as long as there's more than one value for x that makes the denominator equal to zero. Now let's talk about horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes are only going to occur when the degree of the numerator is less than or equal to the degree of the denominator. That means if the degree on top is bigger than the degree on bottom, we're not gonna have a horizontal asymptote. There's two situations you wanna be aware of when we're talking about horizontal asymptotes. The first one looks like this, where the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. When this happens, the horizontal asymptote is always y equals zero. The reason why this happens is because no matter what x is, the denominator is gonna grow faster than the numerator. Imagine if x was 10, or 100, or 1,000, or a million. Even though we're gonna be squaring that number on top, we're gonna to be cubing that number on bottom. As the bottom grows faster and faster compared to the numerator, it approaches zero. Think about some basic fractions like 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 tenth, or 1 one hundredth. As the denominator gets larger for each of these fractions, the expression becomes closer and closer to zero. While this is the case where the degree on top is smaller than the degree on bottom, now let's look at the case where the degrees actually match. While we just finished talking about the case where the top was less than the bottom, now let's talk about the case where they're equal. Whenever the highest degree on the numerator and denominator match, you just take the ratio of the leading coefficients and that's where the horizontal asymptote's gonna be. Since four divided by two is equal to two, that's where a horizontal asymptote is going to be. As x becomes larger and larger and larger, since they're both raised to the first power, they're gonna grow at the same rate. Since that's the case, we can sort of ignore them and just think about their coefficients and find the ratio between them. And finally, let's talk about these strange slant asymptotes. Since vertical and horizontal asymptotes are just linear equations, slant asymptotes also have to be linear. These are only going to occur when the degree of the numerator is exactly one higher than the degree of the denominator. Imagine if you have a rational expression like this. The highest degree on top is two, while the highest degree on bottom is one. Since two is exactly one more than one, we're going to have a slant asymptote. To find out this slant asymptote, you can do polynomial long division or synthetic division to find out the slant asymptote equation. Whenever you take an expression and divide by another expression that's exactly one less in degree, you're always gonna get a linear quotient. The remainder is insignificant and our quotient of two x minus one represents the equation for the slant asymptote. And one more important thing to note is that if these degrees are more than one apart, then there's not gonna be a slant asymptote and there's also not gonna be a horizontal asymptote. Now that we've gone over the three types of asymptotes, I encourage you to grab some paper, something to write with, and let's do some math together. In example one, let's start by looking at the function f of x is equal to one over x. This right here is our parent function for rational functions. I always recommend that you start by finding the vertical asymptotes first. Since our vertical asymptotes are always going to occur when the bottom is equal to zero, we pretty quickly find here that since x can't equal zero, that's where our vertical asymptote is. A key thing to remember that asymptotes are just the locations where the graph actually can't be graphed. So if we know that the x value can't equal zero, that's where the vertical asymptote is. As for the horizontal asymptote, let's take a look at the degrees. Since we can't really see the degrees, let's rewrite the function. In the numerator, we have one x to the zeroth power over x to the first power. It's helpful to remember that whenever we just see a constant, we really have an x to the zeroth power next to it. Since x to the zeroth power is just equal to one, we typically don't write it. Now see if you can remember what we talked about in terms of the degrees. As x becomes larger and larger and goes towards infinity, the numerator is never gonna be able to catch up to the denominator. And because of that, this function is gonna approach zero. Remember from earlier that when the degree of the top is smaller than the degree of the bottom, 
we'll have a horizontal asymptote of y is equal to zero. For the domain here, x can equal anything except for zero, so we can say negative infinity to zero, and zero to infinity. For the range, the y values include anything except for zero, so we can say from negative infinity to zero, and from zero to infinity. Since x and y are not allowed to equal zero for this function, there is no way that this function is gonna have any x or y intercepts. Here's what our vertical asymptote would look like, and here's our horizontal asymptote. To graph this, you can just choose some x values and plug it into your function and get some y values and plot those points. Let me show you what that would look like here. Here's a sketch of the graph. As you can see here, as x becomes larger and larger or goes towards positive infinity, the y values are actually going to be going closer and closer to zero, but will never actually reach it. And while we're on the right side of this vertical asymptote, as the x value becomes smaller and smaller, the y values get infinitely larger. On the left side of the vertical asymptote, you can see that as x gets smaller and smaller or goes towards negative infinity, f of x or the y values get closer and closer to zero, but from the negative side. And finally, from the right side, as the x values approach zero, the y values or f of x approaches negative infinity. In example two, let's take a look at a function that's a little bit more complicated. We have f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 10x minus 8 all over x squared plus 4. Let's try to be consistent and find the asymptotes in the same order. Starting with the vertical asymptote, let's set the denominator equal to 0 to see if we're going to have one. So if we have x squared plus 4 is equal to 0, we can subtract 4 from both sides so we'll get x squared is equal to negative 4. And taking the square root of both sides, we'll find that x is equal to plus or minus 2i. Since we're only dealing with real numbers, we're not going to have a vertical asymptote for this function. Now let's see if we can find the horizontal asymptote. When we're looking for the horizontal asymptote, we really only care about the term in the numerator with the highest degree and the term in the denominator with the highest degree. Nothing else really matters here. Remember that there are two scenarios when we're going to have a horizontal asymptote. One is when the degrees match on the top and the bottom, and the other when the degree on top is smaller than the degree on bottom. In this particular function, we can see that these degrees match. Do you know what to do next? If you were thinking about taking the ratio of leading coefficients, you're absolutely right. Let's take our leading coefficient of 3 up here and 1 on bottom, and finding the ratio of these leading coefficients, we're going to get 3. Our horizontal asymptote here is going to be y equals 3. Since our degrees on top and bottom are the same, as x becomes larger and goes towards infinity, the top and bottom are growing at the same rate. Whenever this happens, we just take the ratio of their leading coefficients. Since we don't have a vertical asymptote, there's no x value that we can't have, so we have the domain of all real numbers. As for the range, we can use any y value except for 3, so we have negative infinity to 3, and then 3 to positive infinity. Remember that when we're solving for an x-intercept, y has to equal 0. And the only way that's going to happen for this function is when the numerator over here is equal to 0. We just have to find when the numerator is equal to 0, because when the top is 0, 0 divided by anything is equal to 0. So let's solve this equation where we have 0 is equal to 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. Let's see if this is factorable here. I'm going to take our factors of 3 and some factors of negative 8. And here we get negative 12 and positive 2. That will get us negative 10. So I can just switch the negative to over here. And these will be our binomials. We can write 0 is equal to 3x minus 2 times a quantity of x plus 4. Setting this binomial equal to 0, if x was equal to 2 thirds, it would equal 0. And setting this binomial equal to 0, if x was negative 4, we would get 0. Our two x-intercepts here are going to be 2 thirds comma 0 and negative 4 comma 0. And remember that when we're looking for a y-intercept, that's when x is equal to 0. So f of x, which is the same thing as y, is equal to 3 times 0 squared plus 10 times 0 minus 8 all over 0 squared plus 4. This will become 0, this will become 0, and this will become 0. So we'll get y is equal to negative 8 over 4, which just simplifies down to y is equal to negative 2. When x equals 0, y equals negative 2, so that's our y-intercept. While this function doesn't have a vertical asymptote, it does have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. We should have an x-intercept over here around 2 thirds, as well as over here at negative 4, and we should have a y-intercept at negative 2. I encourage you to pause the video real quick to see if you can graph it on your own, and then unpause to see what the graph looks like. Here's what we're going to get. Here's our horizontal asymptote of y is equal to positive 3, and here's the function that we were just looking at. You can see here that as x approaches negative infinity, f of x or y is going to approach our horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 3 from the bottom side. And as x approaches positive infinity, it's going to approach our horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 3, but from the top side. 
Here we have one of our x-intercepts of negative 4, and our other x-intercept of 2 thirds. And for our y-intercept, we did get negative 2. The only thing that's a little bit strange about this function is that it actually crosses our horizontal asymptote. While rational functions can cross horizontal asymptotes, you don't have to worry about it crossing vertical ones. For example 3, let's look at the function f of x is equal to x cubed over x squared minus 4. If you'd like to try it on your own, give the video a pause, otherwise, let's get into it. Let's start with the vertical asymptote again and see when the denominator equals 0. And looking at this equation, you can either solve this by using square roots, or you can solve it by seeing it's a difference of squares. Just to practice factoring here, this is going to factor into x plus 2 times x minus 2. So we know that from here, if x is equal to negative 2, we'll get 0. And from this binomial, if x is equal to positive 2, we're going to get 0. The two values that x isn't allowed to equal for our function are going to be our vertical asymptotes of x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. We're going to have two vertical asymptotes for this function. For a horizontal asymptote, just look at the terms with the highest degrees and ignore everything else. Our degree on top is 3, and that's greater than our degree on bottom, which is 2. At this point, you can either try to remember your rules for the horizontal asymptote, or try to think conceptually about whether you'll have a horizontal asymptote or not. For any given x value, the numerator is going to grow faster than the denominator. Because of that, our graph can grow infinitely. If it grows infinitely, there's no specific y value that our graph can't equal. That means we're not going to have a horizontal asymptote. Remember, the only times we'll have a horizontal asymptote is if their degrees match, or if the bottom degree is bigger. At this point, you may be happy that there's no horizontal asymptote, but you have to be careful because the degree on the bottom is exactly one less than the degree on the top. That's right, I'm sorry to break the news to you, but uh, we're going to have a slant asymptote for this function. Since we have degree 3 divided by degree 2, which is just going to be degree 1, we're going to have a linear slant asymptote. To find the equation of this line, we can use long division. Don't forget to write in your placeholders here. And we're going to divide this whole thing by x squared minus 4. To start, we're going to put an x over here. And x times x squared is x cubed. And x times negative 4 is going to be negative 4x. Put that right over here. Subtracting this, we're going to get a remainder of 4x plus 0. Since we can't fit anything else in, this is going to be our slant asymptote. Remember that we can ignore this remainder and the equation of our slant asymptote is y is equal to x. Whenever you don't have a horizontal asymptote, you always have to check for a slant asymptote. In this case, our slant asymptote is y is equal to x. For our domain, all the x values are okay except for negative 2 and positive 2, so we can say negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to positive 2, and positive 2 to infinity. Since we didn't have a horizontal asymptote, our range isn't restricted, so we can just say all real numbers. To find our x-intercept, that's when y is going to equal 0. And to figure out when y is equal to 0, we have to see when the numerator is equal to 0. Setting this equal to 0, we see that x cubed equals 0, but the only number that x could be here would be 0. So it looks like our x-intercept is going to be at the origin here. And to solve for our y-intercept, that's when x is equal to 0. So substituting in 0 for x, we have 0 cubed over 0 squared minus 4. Since this is 0 and this is 0, we're going to get y is equal to 0 over negative 4. And it just so happens that our y-intercept is also at the origin. Graphing our asymptotes, we should have one over here at x equals negative 2, and another one over here at x equals positive 2. And while we didn't have a horizontal asymptote for this function, we do have a slant asymptote right over here. Let me show you what the full graph looks like now. Let's take a look at the full graph here. Here's our first vertical asymptote, where x equals negative 2. And here's our second vertical asymptote, where x equals positive 2. While we didn't have a horizontal asymptote because the degree on top was larger than the degree on bottom, the degree on top was bigger by exactly one degree. Because of that, we used long division to find out what the slant asymptote would be. We got y is equal to x, which is this diagonal line going through the origin. When you graph this, you should have chosen some values that are smaller than negative 2, and you would have realized that they would approach these two asymptotes. And picking values that are larger than 2, you can see that the graphs can approach these two asymptotes. And finally, choosing values that are between negative 2 and positive 2, you'd see that they would approach these two asymptotes in these directions. And while our function doesn't cross the vertical asymptotes, we can see here that it does cross our slant asymptote at the origin. Now that we've gone over a few different examples, let's just take a look at three functions and their graphs. I encourage you to pause the video now to see if you can come up with the asymptotes on your own and graph the functions. For the function on the left, we have two vertical asymptotes at x equals positive 3 and x equals negative 3, and one horizontal asymptote at y equals positive 2. 
For our middle function here, we have our vertical asymptote at x equals positive 4, and our slant asymptote at y is equal to x plus 4. And for our function on the right, we have two vertical asymptotes, one at x equals 5 fourths and x equals negative 3 halves, and we have one horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 eighth. And that wraps up this video on rational functions and their different types of asymptotes. While you can always try to memorize the rules for the asymptotes, you can also just make up some different kinds of x values and see what happens with the y values. Vertical asymptotes are pretty straightforward because you just have to set the denominator equal to zero. The tricky part is when you're dealing with horizontal and slant asymptotes. Remember for horizontal asymptotes, there's two different scenarios. If the highest degrees match on the top and bottom, you're gonna take the ratio of their leading coefficients. And if the degree on top is smaller than the degree on bottom, the function is gonna get closer and closer to zero as x goes towards infinity. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And lastly, if the degree on top is exactly one higher than the degree on bottom, Use long division to find the equation of the diagonal line that will represent our slant asymptote. If you found this video helpful, please let me know in the comment section below and give this video a like. Keep up the good work, stay rational, and I'll see you in the next one.